Hello and welcome to the AI Impact Customer Showcase. My name is Cameron Perone. Today I'm joined by Neil Chinsky. Thank you, Cameron. Happy to be here with you. Wonderful. Uh, Neil, can you please explain a little bit more about some of the use cases that you're seeing coming from, uh, from our customers and their use on, on AI? So yeah, first of all, I think that uh, what we are seeing in the market currently that since AI kind of broke into our life in a more uh, a broader way two years ago, that it's transforming so fast and the pace is so rapid that we see it coming from testing or doing a POC or trying to prove something to become a reality. And uh, we can see here today in the show, there are at least 10 showcase, uh, use cases that we will see, but there's a lot more how companies are actually utilizing AI and becoming from a very nice buzzword to their reality. And uh, actually it's like becoming a part of their daily thing that they're utilizing across the solutions that we are offering in Google Cloud, whether it would be Workspace or Vertex AI or AI Studio or even Gemini, both as a consumer, but also as a, 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 as a, as a organization, big, small. And uh, one of the most uh, use cases I like, I don't know, probably the audience know about 11 Labs, uh, but they don't know they're uh, originally from uh, my regency here in Poland. And when you see what they are doing, their uh, 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 conversational AI, and now even they are entering to the world of, of music and generating music with that AI, it's amazing because things that used to take so much compute power and a lot of lot of money invested in it, uh, they are now enabling that for a user at home in a click of a button and a friction of the price that it was used to cost not that long ago. I'm talking about two years ago. And so for me seeing that and where customers are taking AI in real life, it's amazing because sometimes I even find it hard for me dealing with technology to grasp what will be in two years from now. Okay, and I'm always prepared to be amazed because that's what's going and, and how I feel about it almost on a daily basis, seeing what customers are, are using that technology for. That's really amazing. Um, I, a lot of this stuff is, it, it's like all in theory, right? It, we're talking about like POCs, we're talking about like, um, in many cases, conceptual use cases that the customer can like think about. Um, from your perspective, how are, like, what are some of the things that a decision maker should, should consider when uh, kicking off a POC? So first of all, as I mentioned, POC is, is a good way to start, but I think the industry is already beyond that because there is ROI for AI and it's a proven thing, okay? In a lot of use cases, but definitely as a decision maker and actually what I see from our customers that on AI matters, C-suite decision makers are very much involved because they know that if they want to drive that with that innovation and change in their organization, it needs to come from the top. So they're very, very much involved in those decisions. But when they come to take a decision, you know, they kind of ask what's in it for me. OK, and then when you start showing the impact of small use cases and how, again, by start utilizing that, you can actually create a bigger impact on the whole organization, plus their customers, of course, bottom line, and what matters to them, whether it will be competition or their positioning in the market and all of the things we all know. But once they start seeing the impact, actually what I've been witness, they, did, they, they actually put that in their budget and want to invest more because they see that ROI coming very, very fast. And again, there are the simple use cases. Oh, I want a chatbot, okay? That's really scratching the surface of what AI can really do. But the amazing thing is when you start seeing them using their own data, because I would argue that if you just use public data, how would you actually create an impact? Everyone can use that public uh, data. 
But once you are starting to use your own data to analyze patterns, to see what can, uh, what impact. And I think actually we both this morning talked about the, uh, one of the use cases, how they uh, an analyzed uh, call center calls and took the sentiment analysis and by that leveraging uh, offers that they can offer to new customers. So it's actually, you know, from just understanding better the data, make it actionized and initiate new streams of revenue. So this is what the, the, uh, the, the impact that I see. And this is how I see decision makers taking those decisions because they want to understand better how it will impact and once they see that okay i want more of that and it's kind of uh you know arousing the, that appetite for what ai and that's why i said earlier I'm, I'm i'm prepared personally to be amazed of where customers can take it because we re-released it to the open and then you see wonderful things happen amazing uh it's it's almost like using this idea of uh, agents to to uh, transform the business and to show roi and what are some of the other ways that you see customers using this this, this agent model to bring ROI to uh, the business? So I think the kind of the uh, obvious use case that we even demonstrate how those agents can integrate to the life cycle of a uh, you know uh, end customer management if you are an organization that deals with customers or uh, uh, through the life cycle of a product when you are developing it and how do you collect even uh, you know responses from your cus end customers and integrate it to the R and D process. So those are. I would say that the common ones that we see now and uh, kind of uh, almost every uh, uh, um, customer that we meet he, is like, I want this one. Okay, so those are the obvious ones. And I think since we are uh, kind of launched or populated the concept of agents, I think it was uh, back in April in, in Google Next when we uh, uh, kind of uh, showcased this uh, concept. I think it became very uh, common now that uh, uh, the industry is talking about those agents but what i'm more interested in, and uh i see some customers starting to push that limit on how do you integrate between those typical agents and how you can actually create something that was not there before so it's like you know in the beginning of the days of cloud it was okay let me do a lift and shift to the cloud what I was challenging customers is what you can do in cloud that you couldn't do on your on-prem. And this is where I see AI with this rapid development going right now. It's like beyond what we even articulated when we introduced that concept of agents and customers are being very much creative on kind of, I don't know if you call it a, a, a mega agent or something else. Probably there, there will be a name that will pop up but how they kind of do something beyond that concept of just multiple agents. And now they're all orchestrated, actually talking to each other, getting that knowledge from each other and creating something that is bigger than the sum of all those agents. Amazing. You know, we were talking about it earlier today where um, there, are, there, are, there are different ways of, of, of a technology. Arguably, there was an IT wave. There was a there was a cloud wave. We have this uh, AI wave, right? And we were speaking a little bit about comparing that to electricity. Can you elaborate a bit on, on what this concept is about? Yeah, because, you know, uh, um, we both, uh, well, I don't want to uh, say my age, but we both grew in a in a different uh, technology era and we saw and we witnessed some uh, development whether it was mobile and internet and the cloud uh, uh, 10 years ago or a bit more um, and, and uh, you know what's the beauty of all, all those uh, uh, technologies that are kind of, today that are kind of embedded nobody talks about oh why cloud okay it's like it's, it's the natural choice, it's the obvious choice. And this is exactly what I see happening to AI. I don't think that in a couple of years from now, we will talk about all the usage of AI. Now, I say personally, in my personal life, that my daughter, eight years old, she, she started using AI. I need to start using AI, otherwise that creates a big gap that I will have a hard time to catch up. And exactly what I see now customers are doing because you know it's like electricity you don't talk about that but it's power everything that we are doing but it's just there enabling you to do a lot of things and i think ai is going in the same path just 
in a very high accelerated mode, okay? Because six months now in the era of AI, it's not comparable to what we could do with AI six months ago. So whenever I'm talking with customers ab about AI, I'm trying to figure out, okay, am I up to date on the latest because it rapidly develops. And I think, uh, you know, what, um, what we saw in the past that some customers in some regions were a bit late jumping on that train of cloud, okay? And they could allow themselves to stay on the bench and wait to see what others are doing. I don't think it's an option now. The AI train has left the station. Now, because of that rapid pace, if you miss jumping on that train, you might not get a chance because again, the gap will be so big. So in order to do that leapfrog, uh, uh, I do uh, urge customers to really think about not just when or if, but actually what use cases they are going to do. Because again, the rapid development. And you know, I've witnessed, I've been uh, uh, in an event that we had uh, also in our region in, in Prague two months ago. And there was a CEO of a very successful company, a uh, consumer uh, uh, deliverable company. And he said out loud in front of all the leaders, if your CTO does not push you to AI now, fire him because that train has left the station. You know, your competitors are doing that. Everyone is doing that. It becomes the new norm. You better start working with AI, no matter what the use case, but just start. And then you will get the appetite because this is what's happening. And again, that rapid accelerated mode is uh, kind of forcing you to do things very fast because then it gets uh, the gap is getting bigger and bigger. So personally, I'm doing that, but also working with customers and showing them their sense of urgency. Again, not pushing them to do things they don't need, but that sense of urgency of getting yourself familiar with all what AI can do for you. Because again, as I said, I think a couple of years from now, we will never mention AI. It will just be the power that enable us to do greater things. Amazing. So uh, seems very clear, like, like AI is transforming the way the customers are thinking about even how they're engaging with brands. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for large enterprises to, to modernize the customer experience. Um, this is actually one of the reasons why we created the AI Impact Award, is to recognize customers that are beginning to kick off these, these POCs and solutions with uh, Google Cloud AI. Um, what are some of the ways, some of the key takeaways or things that like a decision maker can think about and prioritize so that they are like innovating and they're thinking ahead? What are some of the key steps that a CTO, CIO or decision maker should think about like taking in the next 30 days if they haven't already got on, got on the train? Yeah, so first of all, the fact that you mentioned the prize, this is a great example. I'm not sure that in five years from now you will give a prize for that, okay? But uh, going back to your question, I think that uh, whether it's a CTO, a VP R&D or a CIO, I think uh, they should really get themselves familiar first with the basics of AI and what it can do both internally and when they are start thinking about more in a business perspective to their customers and, and uh, how it shifts both internally and that impact externally. But I think getting yourself familiar, knowledge is the key. Training your people on some of the AI solutions that is out there. And again, I would argue probably your people already using some of it in their personal life. So it might not be as complex as you might think to jump on that train. I think it's actually not a huge jump. It's really a minor one because uh, uh, we see more and more usage of AI uh, on our daily uh, lives as a, as a uh, you know, uh, personal thing and, and not just on the professional side. So I think that jump is not really a huge jump, but um, I would emphasize again, start doing it now. As you said, in the next 30 days, get yourself familiar with some of the use cases, the common ones and how they can impact you. And you know, the implementation process, as we are talking about AI and a rapid pace, is also very rapid. So uh, I would say that the time to resolve it's very quick, quicker than what people actually usually imagine, especially when talking about IT and they think about big projects, 
multiple months, sometimes years, that's not the case, okay? You know, the, the, the ROI of AI is actually very easy to be proven and in a very short amount of time. So I think those common scenarios that everyone is uh, implementing or getting into, it's, it's very quick to, uh, uh, to uh, deploy them and to see that uh, uh, effect both internally and externally. But then uh, what I believe and what I witness with customers is when they see that they're getting the appetite. But again, in, let's not do it that in too rapid motion, but in baby steps, there are like the common use cases that probably I would dare to say one size fits all. They, they do fit to, uh, you know, probably 90% of the industry. And then you can jump to the more advanced one, even though I would always say to my customers, look, you know, if you're not doing that, someone is doing that. Whether it's your competitor, your competitor that was just born now and he will be your next competitor because he is born into the AI and you are not, you, you are like not native into that. You are just adopting that and they start with that. So there's a huge difference there. So I think uh, my best recommendation is really use those next 30 days and deep dive into that because there's a huge amount of uh, uh, use cases that are very easy to deploy, very fast impact. And then you start getting the appetite and you see that, wow, it's not such a huge project. It's not like, uh, well, we talked about cloud. It's not like migrating to the cloud. Okay. This is a very fast, rapid projects that you can deploy and to start seeing the benefits really quick. Amazing. So like a few, a, a few takeaways on that. One is like simplify the use case. It doesn't need to be rocket science here. Just like there's very common use cases. Think about a, a key ROI metric that like, like a, a revenue metric for the business that you can measure against. Uh, consider like a 30 day plan, right? It doesn't need to be like a nine month plan or six months plan, but like what you can do in 30 days. Um, fourth is like training the, the, the uh, team. But the other thing too that, um, that, that's, that stuck out to me is your, your team is already using the stuff. So it's not like a huge lift. And a lot of these tools are like readily accessible. So it seems like a very uh, simple way to get started. Through that, and I, I, and I truly believe that uh, once you start with that, you see that it's really not a high lift and uh, you know there's no heavy burden on doing those things and uh, customers actually sometimes are really surprised how easy it is to get in and that's where they are getting the appetite and i think that my call to action would be you know start that don't say i'll start tomorrow don't wait for next year maybe uh, i don't know 2025 it's now it's here it's developing on a daily basis so um, in order not to, to be too much left behind, start it now and, uh, you know, uh, then you will never have to play catch up. Wonderful. Nia, thank you so much for joining me thank today. You. Thank you.